Uh, hi guys, this is Chuck Luscombe. How are you? Um, and uh, I had, I did have a question for Brad. Um, and this is more of a design question about the Brit pop specifically. And, you know, one of my, one of my, what, what about the Brit pop design elements that you were working with that brought you to it um, previous to it? And what, what, what did you, what was the culmination of effects that created it? Because it's obviously had such a uh, fabulously long run uh, in popularity and it's just a great boat. Uh, and uh, I'm just curious what the culmination of thoughts and ideas that went into the design that, I mean, you hit it square right in the target. So I'm just curious what you were thinking about it when you created it. Thanks very much. And thanks for the, uh, thanks for the kind words. Um, it was, it was a bit of an interesting one where to, to, I guess, to answer your question in full, I have to go back a little bit uh, to my time while I was racing one metres in Australia before I moved over to the UK. Um, what changed me a little bit is coming from dinghy racing, I guess, and from skiff racing, all of the boats that we were racing at home, and this was it through a time when I had my disco design and previous boats to that, you kind of grow up when you're dinghy and skiff sailing to, and, and, and even keelboat sailing, I guess, for a lot of people, well, you're always sailing your boats with a little bit of inherent weather helm. So if you, take, if you were to take your hands off the rudder, the boat would want to just very slightly climb up a little bit higher into the wind, sometimes just to a stage where your boat's luffing. And my, my um, model boats up until that period that was what I was looking for in the balance. So if you took your eyes off it, the boat would still just want to climb a little bit. Um, and you'd always just be knocking the rudder stick just down a little bit, just to keep it tracking. And that to me was what I knew and what I felt to be right. Um, and it wasn't until I came to the UK, uh, I mean, with the disco, I had a reasonable amount of success with the boat and it, 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 it was a very good competitive boat, but it, it just was just missing the little bit of the top skippers. And I think, you know, um, my experience might've let it down a little bit as well, but it, it, it say it wasn't until I came to the UK and um, Victoria, uh, my girlfriend at that time, uh, now my wife, uh, she was sailing a, um, a Chris Dix designed widget that she built herself with Dave Creed. And we did a national, a UK national championships in 2006 and, um, uh, hard B and C rig conditions at West Kirby. And I launched a boat for a few times off the pontoon with the radio in my hands. And it was one, I was racing a disco at the time that I'd borrowed and, I launched Victoria's widget and I was just like, wow, this thing feels so different to what I've been sailing. And the first thing I had in my head was if I could get this thing to actually have a bit of helm balance and laugh up a little bit upwind, this would be a rocket ship. And unbeknown to me at the time, that was the, the kind of balance boats that a lot of people here in the UK were sailing. And the only thing I could put it down to was the, des the type of design um, was a design that was, uh, and, and a lot of other designs that were here, uh, some good, some not so, um, were designed by people that had raced vein boats where Essentially, in, in light, you, when you let a vane boat go, you can't be knocking the rudder down. And if you've got to set excessive vane trim on it to keep it off, off the wind the whole time, well, your boat's not usually going to be very good. So what the UK skippers, kind of, a lot of them grew up knowing was that the boat needed to be balanced and needed to track. So that was the only kind of the way I could determine how the widget may well have come about. Moving the story forward, uh, I built myself a widget. Uh, I managed to do quite well with that, uh, winning a world championship. And at the time, it was a it was a thirteen year old design, uh, but still and still today has a huge amount of life in it. 
but there were still a few things about the widget that kind of it it still had an awkwardness about it at times and you had to be really on your game to sail it very well in a lot of breeze um moving forward slightly again there was a bit of a transition at the time where they were starting to get uh, some very powerful boats uh, being designed one of them in particular was the lintel uh, by dave creed which was a very successful boat uh probably more so in uh, in strong winds um and 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 moderate winds to strong winds and the widget was starting to struggle against that so it was the widget's time was starting to run out a little bit um but the biggest the biggest problem i had with the widget as when i was putting thoughts to uh, to what i wanted to design was that in the lower rigs and in any kind of wave movement when you were trying to sit on a start line because the rig was so far aft in the boat and the bow was quite pronounced and high the bow constantly wanted to blow away uh, off wind and the boat you couldn't sit with the bow into the wind on a start line and hold your station the bow would always blow and your boat would basically be beam on to the waves on the start line so to slow down on a start line you had to constantly sheet your sails into luff the boat would drift sheet your sails into luff and you just couldn't hold station and it, it became a very awkward boat against boats that had maybe had uh, slightly bigger fins and the rig more central in the boat so that was that was a, a weak point that I, I wanted to iron out in a new boat. You then take into account that obviously your boat's got to be a bit stronger because the lintel showed that the boats need to, needed to be a bit stronger in some wind. But I also felt that the lintel also had um, a, a weakness in lighter airs, if you like. And my thoughts to that was that the chine line on the boat uh, was too low and was dragging in the water in light winds, um, especially on the leeward side. Uh, and I, I felt that in light winds, you don't want the stability of the boat. You want to get a little bit of heel in the boat and let the boat talk to you a little bit before your chine came into play. So I guess in a nutshell, a lot of those little things in my head was what pushed into how the Britpop wanted to work. I wanted a boat that would sail itself to a degree and be well balanced and it's by by saying well balanced um it's kind of a term that's thrown around a bit in model boats as to uh, whether a boat's balanced to sail upwind and it's it's kind of not the definition of what i would call a balanced boat a balanced boat to me is a boat that it reaches its extreme point of a rig at exactly the same point upwind as it does downwind uh, in its limitations. So by that, I mean, if your boat, you'll know that when you're at your point of overpowered upwind, when you're struggling to tack or struggling to make maneuvers, and that point will be at exactly the same point when you're right at the point of being overpressed downwind or being able to carry that rig, that to me is, is a balanced boat, not one that just sails itself in a straight line upwind. So uh, that, that, was, that was my aim to try and get something all round, nice and balanced, something that would roll round into attack nicely and, uh, and, and not have any vices. At, at the time, I think it took me 14 or 15 goes at uh, reshaping, um, an old hull that I had uh, making, put, shifting the volume further and further out into the ends, far more than what I would have thought necessary. But um, in, in the end, it proved to be uh, pretty nice, I think. No, oh, brilliant. And uh, I, guess that's, I guess that's a question. Is that a signal for uh, if you're going upwind in a bread pop and you're starting to struggle, that it's gonna have the same effect downwind? You're gonna see at the breaking point at the same point? If 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 you've got it if you've got it tuned nicely and balanced, I mean, there's there's always some factors that might make it make the balance a little a little bit out 
upwind uh, it just if you're sheeting and and your sails aren't set nicely or bladed out and say if you're overpowered um, but essentially, yes, if you're happy with your upwind trim and you feel like you're starting to get towards the top end, you'll know that you're, you know, you're starting to get a bit of water over the deck at times downwind or just uh, getting a little bit hairy and washing all the men off the deck trying to go through a jibe, then uh, that's, it, it'll tell you. <laughs> if exactly. you've got it set right, it'll tell you uh, both up and downwind when the time is to change a rig.